Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Nari Hishmati. I'm a board certified OBGYN in the North Seattle area and today I'm going to talk to you about GBS or Group B Strep or Group B Streptococci. Now with all our videos we like to have some nice scenery. It is actually a really, really warm day right now. I'm in Chelan County at Lake Chelan. And so Lake Chelan is right here behind me. This is about 50 miles long. This is the largest natural lake in Lake Washington. So it's a great place to come out to the summers for swimming and things like that. Now, GBS, Group B Strep. This is a test that we're going to do later in pregnancy for people. And I often get a lot of questions about it. What is GBS? Why do we test? When do we test? What do we do if we're positive? What does it mean? Well, group B strep and how it got its name is, imagine with bacteria, it's how we can find them. So these bacterial cells have antigens on the outside of them, and we have antibody tests that we can test to determine what's what. Some of them will bind to group A or group B or group C. So there's a group A all the way to group O. Group A, for instance, is strep throat or pharyngitis. Group B strep, the ones we're concerned about, that's a very common colonizer on the body. So what that means is in many people, it just happens to be on the body. For instance, in pregnant women, about 25% of pregnant women are going to be colonized with group B strep. So very, very common thing. The reason that it matters though is while typically this bacteria doesn't cause us a whole lot of problems, in labor or if your water breaks, if you're colonized with GBS, you can get what we call vertical transmission. The bacteria can get to the baby and then the babies can get early neonatal GBS sepsis, which basically means in the first week of life, they can get a serious bloodborne infection. In the 1970s, this was serious enough that there was a 55% mortality or death rate among babies if the mom was colonized with group B strep. In the 1980s, they looked at this more and they said, there's got to be something we can do. And they figured out that it was really effective to give moms antibiotics in labor if they were GBS positive, And we reduced the risk of neonatal GBS sepsis. In fact, for instance, if you're colonized with group B strep, and we don't give you any antibiotics in labor, your risk of having a baby with GBS sepsis is one in 200. But if we give you antibiotics, we drop that risk to one in 4,000. So huge, huge, huge benefit there. Now, the CDC in 2010 came up with guidelines that standardized this entire process. The American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of OBGYNs have both endorsed this policy that's become the national standard for what we do. And what we do is we test everyone at 35 to 37 weeks of pregnancy. The test we're doing is a swab of the vaginal area and the rectum. And the reason for that is GBS or group B strep colonizes typically in the GI tract and the GU tract or the vaginal area. Now the reason for the timing at 35 to 37 weeks if we do it at that time point, that's very good predictive value that GBS is either going to be on your skin or not be on your skin at the time of labor. So if we did it later, we might not have the results back before you go into labor. It takes 24 to 48 hours to get one of those cultures back. If we do it earlier, this is a transient bacteria. It can come and go. So it might be on your skin early in pregnancy, but not be on later when we're going to care about it. So if we do it between 35 and 37 weeks, it's got really good accuracy for about five weeks or so, and there's about a 96% chance that we're gonna be right on that call. So now, let's say you come back and you're GBS positive. Nothing necessarily to be concerned about, but it just means you need antibiotics while you're in labor. And so patients will ask me, can't I just have some antibiotics now? And the answer is no, because if we treat you now, then GBS can just come back later. The other thing is the antibiotics have to be IV or intravenous because oral antibiotics don't get a high enough dose in order to get where we need to be as far as any kind of decrease in colonization counts. The other thing is, we'll do these antibiotics as soon as you either come in and labor or your water breaks. And the reason for that is, although the antibiotics can get to the baby within about half an hour and get good levels to the baby, we want to really lower that bacterial count of group B And the nadir or the low point of that bacterial count is gonna be about after three hours of antibiotics so the general guidelines call for four hours of antibiotics in order to be what we consider adequately treated. Now, I think we've got a seaplane that's about to take off. Yeah, right over there in the background. So other reasons to come out during the lake during the summer. You'll see seaplanes, boats. It's a beautiful place to be. We'll wait for it to pass for a second. Now, the other thing that comes up with the testing, patients will ask me and say, well, I'm having a C-section, should I have my GPS test? And the answer is yes. And the reason for that is, what if your water breaks or you go into labor beforehand? The other thing that comes up is, well, if I was GPS positive in my last pregnancy, do I need to be tested again? And again, the answer is yes, because only about a 50% chance if you had GPS in one pregnancy, 
that you're gonna have it into another pregnancy. Now, there are certain reasons we assume that you're GPS positive and don't test you again, and that's if you had a baby that had neonatal sepsis with group B strep, meaning they got the bloodborne infection in that first week and they got sick, we're automatically gonna be treating you to be safe. The other thing is if during your pregnancy you had a urine culture that grew group B strep, we assume you're what we call a heavy colonizer. There's a lot of bacteria there, so we automatically are gonna treat you. So that's in that pregnancy anytime if there was a urine culture. So those are gonna be the when we test, why we test, what it's important. But this is really a great success story because this used to be a very large problem. And although group B strep remains the number one cause of mortality in that early neonatal uh, period, meaning the number one cause of death from infections, um, we've made great advances. And so that's just a fantastic story. Now, I do also point out people come in when I give them the results and if they're negative, they're excited and they're like, yeah. If they're positive, they're kind of sad and they go, well, why am I positive? Common skin colonizer, again, 25% of all pregnant women, it's not an STD, it's not anything good, it's not anything bad. I had a grandma come in with one of my patients once and when I said to the patient, you're GBS positive, the grandma looked at me and said, I told her I didn't like that boy. And I go, no, 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 ma'am, this is not an STD, this is nothing bad. You know, we just need to know to have the information to give you the antibiotics when we're in labor. And the grandma looked, at, it's an STD. And I said, no, 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 it could be on my skin, it could be on your skin. And apparently she got very insulted because she looked at me and goes, don't ever say I have GBS on my skin. So common skin colonizer, easy to treat. We just have to give penicillin in labor. Don't worry if you're allergic to penicillin. There are other antibiotics that we can do, but an antibiotic as easily as penicillin is gonna work for this. And really the goal is healthy mom, healthy baby. And this is part of how we get there. So have a nice day and enjoy the lake.